Zechariah 8. Uh, shalom, shalom. Before I get started, as always, I want to give all praise to our power. Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha HaKodash. Double homage to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And salutation and blessings to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four winds of the earth. All right, that believe wholeheartedly. And the true doctrine of being pushed throughout the four winds of the earth who are in hope of mercy and salvation during the time of Jacob's trouble, as well as when Yahweh Shai returns to the planet Earth. All right. Um <clears throat> excuse my voice if it sounds a little uh I sound a little stuffy. I've been, you know, down and out for the past couple of days. Um I don't know how the hell I got a <laughs> I guess it's a, a, a head cold, um, you know what I'm saying? It's all right here in my, in my head, but, um, you know, I'm getting better, whatever, you know. Um, but as you can see in the title, uh, this will be a response to this video that I posted uh, about 10 days ago, um, dealing with Dealing with the angel, yeah. Dealing with the angel that uh that appeared at the camp, all right. <clears throat> and um, you know, I had quite a quite a quite quite a few comments, quite a few views. I've never had a video um get that many views. Um, and you, I've had quite a few uh, videos. I mean, I'm sorry, uh, comments, you know, of unbelief, which is fine. You know, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? That's, hey, y'all can do what y'all want. You know what I'm saying? You can believe what you want. That's why I said in the beginning of this video, you know, you can believe what you want to believe. All right? Um, and, and for the most part, those unbelieving comments come from our people. All right? And, and it's simply the Lord, the Lord ain't dealing with you, right? The Lord's not dealing with you. You probably never uh, gone into the scriptures uh, at all since this video may have popped up around your feed or whatever, right? So you had to throw your little unbelieving comments up there. And like I said, which is cool. You can believe what you want to believe, right? But in this video here, what I want to do, I want to go into some scriptures that actually <clears throat> show uh, that angels interacted with men um, since the beginning, all right? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> since the beginning, since the Lord placed man on the earth, all right? Angels have always been interacting with men, and it's nothing changed, and and there will be more and more of these type of interactions, all right? Because we're getting closer and closer to the end, all right? So without any further ado, we're just going to jump right into the scriptures, all right? Um, first one I have on my, my list is, uh, which these aren't in, in any particular order, all right? We're going to go to the book of Judges, the 13th chapter, all right? Uh, this was dealing with um, the children of Israel once again. Uh, and in this particular case, um, we were being oppressed by the Philistines, uh, real so-called Africans, Hamites, uh, so you can understand, or, or Africans, real Africans, so you can understand, because contrary to popular belief, um, Africans, all right, real Africans are not Israelites, okay? We are not related to the real Africans, the so-called Negro, all right? Um, so we were being oppressed by the, the Philistines, okay? And the Lord was getting ready to raise up a savior or a judge, okay? A judge by the name of Samson, all right? 
And in this particular case, the Lord <clears throat> sent an uh, angel unto, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Lord sent an angel unto uh, Samson's mother, all right, and at first she didn't under she didn't know if it was an angel, and uh, when she went and told her husband, excuse me, ah, so crazy. Excuse me. Then when he appeared to him again, she went and grabbed her husband. He didn't know, but he did an act to 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 uh, indicate that he was an angel of the Lord. All right. So we're gonna read through this real quick. Uh, this is the book of Judges, the thirteenth chapter, and we're gonna start at verse two. All right. As a matter of fact, we'll start at one. It says, "And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord." And that's the sentiment of us as a people, all right? This is why we were constantly being thrown in and out of captivity, all right? Uh, I.e. why Esau has the advantage over us now, all right? But that that uh, that's being broken, all right, through these prophecies because we're getting ready to be risen back up, all right? <clears throat> It says, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man, Zorah, man of Zorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son, now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. For, lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come up, come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto the, unto the Most High from the womb. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. It says... Then the woman came and told her husband, all right, saying, a man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Just like in this video, uh, the brother, uh, Elder Manata Zakba, all right, he uh, brought this scripture out in the video that he did, and this is how. You know, the countenance, all right, the countenance was, as she said, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, all right, his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God, very terrible, but I asked him, not whence he was, neither told he me his name, all right, she didn't ask him, she just, she had that feeling, she had that, you know, and he was like, he had, he, you know, you can imagine her telling her husband this, all right? Okay, and it says, verse 7, but he said unto me, behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to, to the Most High from the womb to the day of his death. And when, then... Uh, this is uh, her husband, Manoah, which he did the right thing. He went and prayed to the Lord. He entreated the Lord, all right? Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O oh my Lord, let the man of God, which thou didst sin, come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And the Most High hearkened to the voice of Manoah, <clears throat> and the angel of the Most High came again, Unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and shooed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And this reminds me of one of those unbelieving comments, the incredulity comments that was on that video 
uh, you know what I'm saying? So what, what scriptures say that the angels look like this? They tell you that the angels come in the form of men. If you know how to read and comprehend what you're reading. Angels come in the form of men, all right? <clears throat> and Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child? And how shall we do unto him? <clears throat> and the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her uh, beware, all right? Like he told her in the beginning, she may not eat anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread, and if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto Yahweh, the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. All right? Because he, he was in the form of a man. Of a man. But he's getting ready to do something that confirmed that he was an angel sit from the Lord. <clears throat> All right, it said, And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor? And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? So Manoah took a kid with the meat offering and offered it upon the rock of the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. Okay. And Manoah and his wife looked on. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from the altar. That the angel of the Lord ascended into the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. So that was their sign. That that wasn't no regular man. This was an angel of Yahweh by Shem Shai. Which, again, which this proves that angels dealt with men, all right, and, uh, as well as women, all right, from, from, from the beginning, all right? This is just one account, all right? Um, it says, matter of fact, let's look up this word wondrously. <clears throat> uh, the Hebrew word is pala'ah, which means, when you go down here, it says to be marvelous, be wonderful, be surpassing, be extraordinary, separate by distinguishing action, to be beyond one's power, be difficult to do, to be difficult to understand, to be wonderful, extraordinary, marvelous. Uh, to separate, to do extraordinary or hard or difficult thing. And that thing he did was he straight up descended up into the flames, all right? To make wonderful, do wondrously, all right? <clears throat> now let's go back. Verse 20, again, it says, For it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from, from off the altar that the angel of the Lord ascended. I said descended, but ascended. He ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah <clears throat> and his wife looked on and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Okay? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> Verse 
Hmm. All right, next scripture, we're going to go to the book of Joshua. Chapter 5. <clears throat> and we're going to go down. <clears throat> right here at uh, the 13th verse. Um which this was when we get we were getting ready to take down Jericho, all right? <clears throat> so we're going to read 13, all right? Uh, Joshua 5 and 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, all right? Again, there stood a man the angels come in the form of men, all right? There stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went on to him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my Lord unto, the, unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host, all right, <clears throat> which he, this was a, a high-ranking angel, all right, the captain of the armies of the heavens, all right, okay, and the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoe off thy foot, for the place wherein thou standest is holy, and Joshua did. And then he, you know, when we go on to the next chapter, he gives Joshua the instruction um, on what to do to take down Jericho, all right? Which this is a famous story, all right? Famous history, should I say. <clears throat> so that's another account, all right? Where the angel of the Lord appeared to... Uh, Men, Yahweh Bashi, uh, was dealing with <clears throat> and, and gave them instruction, all right? Gave them guidance, okay? Uh, let's go to the book of Numbers. Numbers 22. Okay. <clears throat> and um <clears throat> we gonna go to uh We'll start at 20. The key point is down here. Um, in this section. All right, we'll read probably down to. Uh, <clears throat> well, we'll, we'll just read down, all right? Another account. And this was a heathen that the angel appeared to, all right? This is Numbers 22 and 20. And 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 and, and God came on to uh, Balaam at night and said unto him, If the men come to call thee, rise up and go with them. But yet the word which I shall say unto thee, that shalt thou do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And the, and the angels, because that word... Uh, God's right there. When you look it up, I believe that's the word Allahim, which it is. All right? And the powers, okay? The angels. 
because the angels, the most high don't do nothing. All right. He sends his angels down to make things happen on the earth. Okay. And the gods and the most high's anger or his angels anger was kindled against, was kindled because he went and the angel of the Lord stood in the way for an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his ass and his two servants were with him. And the ass saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his sword drawn in his hand. And the ass turned aside out the way and went into the field. And Balaam smote the ass to turn her into the way. But the angel of the Lord stood in the path of the vineyards. A wall being on his side and a wall on that side. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she thrust herself onto the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. And he smote her again. And the angel of the Lord went further and stood in the narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right hand or to the left. And when the ass saw the angel of the Lord, she fell down onto Balaam, under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled and he smote the ass with the staff and the Lord opened the mouth of the ass and said unto Balaam what have I done unto thee that thou hast smitten me these three times and Balaam said unto the ass because thou hast mocked me I would there I would there were a sword in mine hand for now would I kill thee and the ass said unto Balaam am not I thine ass upon which thou hast ridden Ever since I was nine unto this day, was I ever wont to do so unto thee? And he said, Nay. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. All right? So again, another account in the Holy Scriptures angels coming down to direct men's path and this was a heathen all right the angel of the lord said unto him wherefore has thou smitten thine ass these three times behold i went out to withstand thee because thy way is perverse before me all right because he was going to try to curse the children of israel which ain't gonna work it wasn't gonna work all right point being uh, again, another account of the angel of the Lord. Now, let's go to the book of Genesis 18. Genesis 18, starting at 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the, from the tent door. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so like it. Verse 2 again. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. All right? And when you read down, um, let's see. When you read down, <clears throat> There was a uh, matter of fact. Let's go up a little bit. Again, they were referred to as men here, but these were angels, because these were the two angels that went over to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah to destroy it. All right. Um.
Let's see. Let's start at uh. Okay, here we go. We'll start at nine. <clears throat> Let me blow my nose real quick. So I can. Uh, verse 9 it says and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age and ceased to be with and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Meaning Sarah Nep, she didn't get her period no more. They call that, uh, in today's terms, they call it menopause. <clears throat> he said, therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, shall I of a surely bear a child which am old because Abraham knew that these were angels right but Sarah she she tried to uh say she didn't laugh when she did all right <clears throat> um coming down I'm gonna just jump right here and the men rose up from thence and looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham sh shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. And this was Yahweh himself as the angel with, his, with two other angels, okay? For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. And the Lord said, because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great and because there is, uh, their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which has come unto me. And if not, I will know. And that proves that, they, uh, that he, this was, these were angels. Okay? And the men turned their faces from thence and went towards Sodom. But Abraham stood yet before the Lord. All right. <clears throat> and Abraham drew near and said, Would thou also destroy the righteous with the wicked? So two angels left to go handle business in Sodom. All right. And this third angel was there to give Abraham the message that he was getting ready to have a son. In fact, he told him, I will return on to thee in the time of life. All right? <clears throat> which was Isaac. Okay? Which Isaac, in the reincarnation, is our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right? Now, here's another one in the book of Genesis 32. Dealing with our forefather Jacob, <clears throat> right before he went on his journey. Just these two verses, all right? <clears throat> because the angels are constantly watching over the Lord's people, all right? In particular, his elect in this time, all right? Genesis 32, 1 and 2, it says, And Jacob went on his way, and the angels of the Most High met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's host. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Mahanaim. Naim. All right. Mahanaim, which means two camps. All right. Because he saw the angels of the Lord watching over him. Okay. Two camps. Mahanaim. Or Mahanaim. 
Maha Nayam. All right, Maha Nayam. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. So, uh, so that's another account. Our forefather Jacob, when he was going on his journey, the angels of the Lord was watching over him in the sky, all right? And he saw him in the, in the chariots, all right? Uh, uh, the, host of the, the host of the Lord, meaning the army of the Heavenly Father, okay? Um... Let's get this one here in the book of Tobit. And then you also got the New Testament. You might be saying, well, that's just in the, the Old Testament you read. Well, the, the angel showed up in the New Testament as well. <clears throat> Matter of fact, it was two angels that Mary saw. Okay? That told her to go tell Peter and them that the Lord is risen. The book of Tobit, 12, and um, we'll go straight to the point, verse 15. When you read this whole, the whole chapters, or the whole book, <clears throat> um, Tobias, which was Tobit's son, neither Tobit knew that the man that went with Tobias on his journey was an angel, all right? But he sent he was sent <clears throat> to help Tobias so that he can get his wife. Read the whole chapter or the whole book if you want to get the understanding. All right. This is uh October 1215. I am Raphael, one of the seven holy angels which present the prayers of the saints and which go in and out before the glory of the holy one. Now he didn't tell him when he first uh got with uh Tobias and Tobit. He told him his name was Azariah or Isaria, which means help. All right. Help of the most high. Help of the uh, uh, Yahweh has helped. OK. And that's what he came to do. He came to help. OK, because he had to show Tobias how to bound this demon that was uh, on his woman that was killing every man that lay down with him. OK. Verse 16, then they were both troubled and fell upon their faces, for they feared. But he said unto them, fear not, for it shall go well with you. Praise the Most High, therefore, for not of any favor of mine, but by the will of our power, I came, wherefore, praise him forever. All these days I did appear unto you, but I did not neither eat nor drink, but you did see a vision. Now, therefore, give God thanks, for I go up to him, <clears throat> uh, for I go up to him, for I go up to him. He sent me, but write all things which are done in a book. And when they rose, they saw him no more. All right. Another account of the angels coming down. All right. Now, let's go to the. Uh, My beautiful Tobit daughter. <clears throat> this is the book of John, the four, uh, fifth chapter, four verse. All right, matter of fact, um, John chapter five. Uh, I'm gonna start at two. Key point is the uh, fourth verse. Now, <clears throat> John 5 and 2. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches, right? And 
In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, a blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Right? Because this was a custom. Something that happened uh, annually. Um, or uh, certain seasons, as it says. I ain't going to say annually because it doesn't say that. Where the angel would come down and trouble the water. And whoever got in the water first was healed of whatever ailment they had. All right? Verse 4. Um, for an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever there first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And that's something that would happen amongst the children of Israel. All right? But we so lost and so unbelieving, these things don't happen no more. But they're starting to happen again amongst the Heavenly Father's elect. Lord will the Heavenly Father keep the spirit on us all. All right? To, to, to stay believing. All right? <clears throat> because these things are, are, are getting ready to start happening on a grand scale. Matter of fact, when you go to Daniel, the 12th chapter, um, it tells us that uh, that Michael is going to defend uh, uh, the elect. Let's get that real quick. And at that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince would stand for the children of thy people. Michael is one of the archangels of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. All right. The word Michael means he who is like God, all right? It says, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book, because the angels are going to have charge over us. As a matter of fact, Psalms 91, okay? The Lord said he shall... Uh, Give his angels charge over us. Let me see. I'm going to go straight to the point. Yep. Psalms 91 and 11. All right. I'm going to start at 10. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. All right. For protection. All right. And then when you go to Revelation, the third chapter. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, tenth verse, okay, it says, "Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth." And that's fastly approaching upon us all. All right, that's why I say, all you unbelievers, believe what you want to believe, but you're gonna be faced with this hour of temptation too. All right, now when you go to the cross reference. All right, <clears throat> let's see. The word keep, or also shall keep thee, which it doesn't have it here. <clears throat> I know it's in my hand Bible, my regular Bible. When you go to the precept that it provides in Revelation 3 and 10, it takes you right back to Psalms 91. He shall give his angels charge over thee. Matter of fact, when you look up this word, keep, it's the Greek word, terio, okay? Like I said, the Greek word, terio, which means to attend to carefully, take care of, to guard, all right? And the Heavenly Father himself won't do it. He's going to send his angels. All right? To keep one in the state in which he is, to observe, to reserve, to undergo something. All right? And he's going to send his angels to do such matters. As we read in Daniel, the 12th chapter, first verse, as we read in Psalms 91 and 11, as, we, as it is written in Psalms 34 and 7. Okay? Many scriptures. Okay? 
So I think I'm going to end it there. Um, you know, I think the point has been proven. Uh, you know, that angels have been dealing with men on the earth for a very long time, all right? They have been appearing to men on the earth for a very long time. It's just been, you know, a long time since the Lord has done such. But now that we're getting closer, we're closer to the end, these things are going to start to be made manifest more and more <clears throat> as Esau gets closer and as these things, uh, as far as Jacob's trouble, start to spill over in the planet Earth. All right? So with that, giving all praise to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha HaKodash, double honor to the apostles and the elders once again. And Lord will, this was edifying to the hopeful elect and be on to the next. Shalom.